as a business sales and leadership coach, I'm really investing my time and energy in empowering individuals, teams, and organizations to be successful. So I work with service-based, relationship-based entrepreneurs, business owners who are great at their craft and their specialty and need to figure out all things business, marketing, and sales. So I support you in developing a strategy and competitive edge to really think about the problems that you solve, the value that you bring, and why do business with you. I also work with executive management, sales teams, and organizations, particularly where you are promoting your super workers to then be supervisors and become great uh, managers. And what we really don't do is teach those kinds of things through education. And today, I'm really bridging the gap between education, workforce, leadership, business, and entrepreneurship to really make things happen for maximizing individual team and organizational potential. I came from education in my background, and I I worked in early childhood, child care, and I worked, uh, I, I taught college, and I was really working and implementing best practices in my classroom and also helping uh, teachers to do the same. And a number of uh, years ago, I sat on a committee in the state of Pennsylvania when they started to talk a whole lot more about testing than they talked about learning. And I thought, I need to pivot. So I already was consulting and, and involved in professional development uh, from a quality initiative. And so what I did was I moved from working with the little kids to be working with the big kids in uh, teams and organizations and as they are leaders growing their businesses uh, overall. And I, I, I really found that I needed to find them at that space to provide them with the best practices to implement into their businesses to really make things happen. Well, I, I was inspired early on because I felt like my education didn't really work for me like I thought it could and should. And I wondered about that as far as being a student myself. And so I thought, I need to figure this out. So I decided to get into education to figure out why this didn't work. And boy, did I get to learn a lot of interesting kinds of things about what it was that we were doing in education that weren't necessarily the right thing and that we already have all of this knowledge about why and how children develop and and about adult learning principles and we're still today not implementing them in the way that we could and should and so when i entered into education and I knew what kind of impact that I could really have. I knew that I knew that the individuals that I were were working with were certainly resilient because they were already entrepreneurship. They were already leadership in spirit. So they were certainly resilient to work through what it was that they were going to get knocked down in school and put into a box and told, now regurgitate this information back to me when what do we need later on as we're coming out into the real world we need innovators and thinkers and problem solvers and we tell everybody to play in the sandbox together after we said sit down and be quiet uh in school overall so i thought let me move to get to know the big kids as i said out there to really support them in planning developing growing their businesses uh, and their teams overall. Well, one, one of the things that I just mentioned was because I was open to it and learning about the creative uh, and the wondering and the curiosity spirit of children, I noticed and I didn't quite know it yet, maybe at that time, that leadership and that entrepreneurial spirit in children already. But then what do we do? We knock that down and put that them into boxes and labels and those kinds of things. 
So I, they already embrace that. And just think, what would happen in this world if we really took children from the developmentally appropriate curiosity, wondering, thinking that they have, and cultivate that spirit throughout that young child and adolescent life. Just think what kinds of adults we would have coming out here. And, you know, we could have all kinds of a philosophical question about this, but just think about, especially adolescents, the kinds of things that we are not necessarily providing for them to think and problem solve and, and evolve and become independent. And then later on, we're napping something and saying, okay, now be adult and, and do this. So there's a lot of similarities in that entrepreneurial spirit that I am finding out there in our leaders. And so you have leaders out there who are visionary and looking at the big picture for their organization. And they need best practices, support, tools and resources that go around with the details and the mission and how they're working in and on their business and how they're developing their team. Well, what does that remind you of? That reminds you of labels we're putting on children that relate to attention deficit disorder or attention, attention deficit disorder with hype, hyperactivity. And, and yet we're, we're, we're squashing that down. And then, and then some of the adults are coming through where we're then, we're either, we either then think back on labels and those kinds of things, but we want, and we need those visionary to be out there be, and being initiative, uh, taking initiative and being innovative in what it is that they're doing. So think about the similarities of the children aspect and the creative kinds of things that we're squashing down just a little bit. And then to think about what it is that we need from a leadership perspective overall. And we certainly need to celebrate the strengths and characteristics that are coming from individuals who are, who are thinking and leaders and problem solvers and communicators out loud, along with the individuals who process more internally and take sometimes a little bit longer to think about what they're doing. And yet when we gather around a table and we're, we're having a staff meeting and we're working through some issues, we tend to think that the people who might sit back and want to think about something aren't engaged or aren't participating. Well, hello, we process differently. And some people process externally and share in their ideas and let me tell you these things where, and let me do it right away where others need some time to think back. And so then how are those leaders finding those individuals who don't want to hold their paper up? There's another connection from the kids. Who were the kids that all wanted to hold their papers up and who were the kids that didn't? And yet sometimes we said, everybody needs to stand up and hold their paper. Well, that didn't make sense then. And it doesn't make sense today, again, to come out. But some of the people who are quiet and thinking and taking some time to figure things out are the ones that we need to go find somewhere and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation and say, tell me, Allison, what were you thinking about when we said blah, 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 blah and get what it is that you might share all in a one-on-one -on -one conversation that you were not going to stand up inside that staff meeting or on the, on the either face-to-face -face whiteboard or the virtual whiteboard and stand up there loud and proud and say, here's what I think we should do. And we're leaving so much opportunity on the table when we don't think about the different learning styles and strengths that people are bringing to the table. 
and we put people into boxes to say every manager has to do all of these different activities. Well, managers can be leaders and problem solvers and communication and leaders can be attention to detail and documentation and productivity and accountability. And how are we pulling all those strengths together that really maximize uh, the individual team and organizational potential of an organization? We're not doing that. And so again, that's some of the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing to bring value to those organizations. I think it's about one of the things that I really focus on today when, 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 and I, and I like that you said consulting because <clears throat> one of our problems is, is that service and relationship based businesses who are solving problems and bringing value to the individual families, businesses, communities, stakeholders that they serve should be staying consultative in their process and rather than turning transactional by leading with the problem with the with the products and services so when you stay consultative you develop your strategy overall what's your why what's your purpose what do you want to become what's your vision what are your core values that drive that decision making What's your mission, the what and the how to make that happen? What's your competitive edge, the problems that you solve, the value that you bring, why do business with you? That sets the tone for why you do what you do on a daily basis. And sometimes we lead with the problems we solve and the value that we bring. So way early on, I one time put a post out to say, Okay, hello, who's doing strategic planning? I'm here for you and I'll facilitate your strategic planning retreat. Call me and let's set up a time. Who's going to call you? Nobody. Cricket. Out there. And so we don't lead with the products and services. We lead with the problems we solve and the value that we bring. And then we listen to and understand where somebody is, where they want to be. And then we think about what kinds of tools do we have in our toolbox? What kind of resources do we have? What are our recommendations that we make for next steps that then provide the opportunity for somebody to buy and engage with us? That then we're being true to ourselves and we're bringing value to, again, the individual, family, business, is teen stakeholders, communities that we're serving. I really think that sometimes we forget to or we do create a strategy and we put that strategy up on a shelf somewhere. And there's a lot of organizations that are out there that uh, create that that invest all kinds of time and energy in creating a strategic plan and then put that up on itself. And you have such an opportunity to brainstorm together your strategy overall, as I said before, your vision, your core values, your mission, your competitive edge, and have that drive your decision making and set the tone for your organization. And that sets a tone for what are the roles and expectations throughout your organization? What does productivity look like and accountability? And that really sets the tone for how you work in and on your business, why we're doing what we're doing. It also goes back to what you just said about education. And the question is then when you think about roles and expectations and teams, how are you filling your cast box? And when I talk about cast box, I do use it as a quadrant, K-A-S-K-A-S-H. And so 
we hire people for their knowledge and their skills, the K and the S. We fire people for their attitudes and their habits, the A and the H. And so again, we're developing from uh, an education standpoint of get good at your craft, your specialty, your trade. And we're not necessarily doing the leadership thinking and problem solving that, that are the other pieces that connect to all of that. And so we're really continuing to, you know, bridge, bridge or, 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 or widen that gap overall between education, workforce, leadership, business, and entrepreneurship. And needing to then come back and fix those things so when we say, I'm frustrated with my boss. I, I, I wonder about the culture here. I, I don't, I'm not getting the communication that I want and I need from my other team members. Our departments aren't talking to one another. We have silos that we need to break down. And so we're, we're, we're having these disconnects in our businesses that kind of stem from the disconnect that we set up through education overall. And as we think about it, then how are we really setting the tone for trust, respect, and rapport? And when we do that, we really create that opportunity for employee satisfaction and really maximizing customer loyalty overall. And that's really what it's about. What is your overall strategy? What, is, what are your processes and structure? How do you get the right people doing the right things for the right reason? What's that motivation and drive? You have your leadership all around, and then we're really looking for that customer loyalty and result. And we haven't really done some great development in why and how we're leading and managing individuals within our team. And we aren't using our strategy and our policies and procedures overall in our culture to set the tone for that. We're, we're, um, we, we, we sometimes uh, um, blame people and act like we don't like somebody because of what it is that they did. We're not taking it into the context of this is what I specifically observe from you. This is how it relates to why we do this or why we don't do this related to our policies and procedures. And this is, this is what we do to be productive and efficient, effective and productive in, in our business. And so we're not learning to take the people aspect out of it in a general sense to put it back into these are the expectations that then sets the tone for accountability and, and keeping then also people as the part, part of the culture that's based upon this is identifying and knowing that this is somebody's strength and then why and how we each bring value to the organization. And so to be efficient, effective, and productive and have those high performance organizations, we really need to invest in our team and explore and implement best practices around leadership, management, communication, confidence, motivation, problem solving, decision making, teaming, collaboration, innovation. And really, as we explore and implement those best practices, how are you every day celebrating your strengths, identifying areas for growth, really considering ideas to develop, and then breaking habits that are no longer efficient, effective, and productive. And that's a phrase that I recently added to that list that I was kind of always dealing with people to say, okay, let's celebrate your strengths around this best practice. Let's think about your areas for growth. Let's consider those ideas to develop. And the problem is there's all kinds of stuff 
always coming to us. There's always another webinar, another workshop, another strategy, another bright, funny object to say, ooh, let's do this, ooh, let's do this. And that piles them up too high for us that we're not integrating those best practices into what it is that we're doing in our organization. And so sometimes we need to break habits that are no longer efficient, effective, and productive. And that's an okay, and that's a needful thing to do. It helps us with really investing our time, energy, and dollars for a return overall. And we have to remember that when we spend time, it's used up, it's exhausted. We don't get it back. And so why and how are we investing time and energy to work in and on our business and maximize our individual team and organizational potential to be really efficient, effective, and productive? I really think that we need to have one-on-one and group conversations with people uh, and and use our strategy overall to set the tone. So here's, here's what we all agreed to and signed up for. I think we should use what I call your strategic business framework, that one pager when I said before about creating a vision, core values, mission, and competitive ed. I think that should be an onboarding, signing off kind of thing that is almost like to my ability, I will, uh, I, w- I understand and I will implement the, the, this, this strategy to the best of my ability. And so when we use that strategy overall, then we consider our strategy to create the priorities and the action steps of what it is that we need to achieve. And go back to your schooling questions again. How many times did we not have children or students, if they're older, really identify something they wanted to learn about or something that they wanted to achieve? We mostly imposed those goals or said what those expectations are. Now, out as we're the big kids, we're we're saying, take initiative and set your goals and let me know what you want as far as in your performance review and all of those kinds of things. Yet, we haven't necessarily provided the environment for that and some of the tools and resources to really make that happen. So you have to create that sense of trust and respect and rapport and confidence and motivation, in fact, to do that. And so when we talk about setting goals, that goes eh, to, you know, how many people all the time. And I like to talk about it as, as, as setting and achieving goals. Because then we're putting the end in mind at the same time. Because otherwise you're going, oh no, this is just going to go on forever. And so based upon our strategy, based upon our priorities, based upon brainstorming we've done together, what what are any of those goals that might be individual, team, or organizational that we brainstorm uh, that we want to achieve? And... And the one, the cool thing about goals is goals are really about creating habits. And it's about doing tasks. It's about creating systems. And we put this uh, on goals only for the fact of making them some, some nebulous or, you know, gooey or made up kind of thing of, oh, the, you know, let's create these short term or let's create even worth the long-term goals that mean nothing to anybody and we're not really going to make happen. And so when we get really specific about our goals, it's really an interesting kind of thing. And when we talk about setting goals and we connect it to creating habits or creating systems, it really only takes 21 days to create a habit. So if there are some things that you want to put into place on a regular basis 
that you don't do every day over time, it can really take you just 30 days to make that happen. And so if you're really trying to implement some best practices around how you're communicating, that you either want to increase this kind of communication or you want to decrease this kind of, of communication, um, you can do that really within 30 days as you have some focus around that. And sometimes there are tasks or uh, systems kinds of things that might take uh, three day, three months to work through. And some of the best practices around there are choose one goal over a hundred days. And what I love about the 21 days to create a habit, that's really around 30 days when you think about working days and into that. When you think about work on one goal over a hundred days, that's like work on a goal over three months. So in your first month, if you need it to be a little bit longer term, because that makes sense, you're creating and setting yourself up for success over that first month. You know, what kind of templates do you need to make or what kind of, what kind of, what kind of specific things do you need to do to set the tone for that goal? What kind of research do you need to do? Whatever it might be, that a little shorter term action step. Then you might in that first month, in the second half of that first month, put some of that into practice and then you might be checking that out then you might get really good at it over month two then you're kind of reflecting on some things and then really getting good at it over month three and then you have a system and a process in place that then you can analyze and take a look at to see how it is that it's working the biggest problem about setting and achieving goals is that we put them into place we try them out for a day or two and then we're like, fuck, that didn't work. And we give it up and say, well, that didn't really make sense. And the problem is, is that we haven't really thought about the goal setting and achieving process overall that relates to really identifying those specific goals and thinking about the rewards and consequences to achieving them or not achieving them identifying those barriers and obstacles or interruptions that might happen and how we're going to resource that goal. That's one of the biggest problems in organizations, especially I like it more, like you said, like we were saying here from the beginning of that we're, we're um, brainstorming those goals based upon priorities. Well, sometimes, unfortunately, goals are 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 handed down to us so if we're given goals um or benchmarks or performance indicators or whatever it is one of the biggest problems is are they resource and what i mean by resource are do we have the time energy dollars tools resources things that we need to really make them happen and that's our one of our first big uh um obstacles so has we, has we already take care of those problems of the barriers, obstacles, interruptions, and the resources that we need, then we can really brainstorm openly the, the possible solution that we might put into place and then identify those best solutions to do that, create those action steps, Put them into time frames that there might be something over a week and something over this time and then putting it into practice and giving ourselves time to make that happen and creating those affirmations that are those I am statements that you have already achieved that goal. That's such a big deal that makes a whole lot of sense from you individually and you can also do that as a team because again, we're on the same page. We're talking the same language in how we're investing our time uh, based upon that in an overall way. So when we think about strategy and we think about being efficient, effective, and productive as a high performance or organization, and we think about goal setting and achieving, it really sets the tone for these P's that I like that we're thinking about our purpose and our planning and how we're prioritizing and the people 
and the processes and the productivity that leads to profit. So it, it's a real circle that creates all of that to happen to really be a high performance organization that is all about really maximizing that individual team and organizational potential. So it sets the tone for you to work smart, to be efficient, effective, and productive, to achieve results in your personal, professional, business, organizational goals, and to make sure that we're celebrating often to reflect, recharge, and have fun. Lots of times we don't give ourselves credit for that, and so all we're feeling like we're doing is spinning our wheels to recreate another goal or do another thing that we're not necessarily taking all the way to put into place to then celebrate our accomplishments and making all of those things happen. We need to celebrate our successes. Listening is our first tool that we should be bringing to the table. And my guess is you might think about the other piece of advice that I'll say, because what word did I say 10 times during this? We have to develop our strategy. So many people create their business by creating a business, business card, a website, doing some kind of marketing, brainstorming all the cool stuff, that you're going to do and make happen. And what we don't really do is create that strategy. So when we set the tone with our strategy and we share that out with our purpose and our passion and our why, and then when we really listen to and understand our employees, our team members, our stakeholders, it makes all of the difference in the world. I wondered how that was going to be on some of the transition to virtual. And I, I, I was always in, you know, we talk about strengths. I'm a, I'm a high touch and, and high involved. And so when we had some of the transition of, uh, of then working virtually, I already was doing some of that working virtually by opportunities that I had. And I thought, you know, I think that I can be effective in this. And it was interesting to do that and to have teams who were across a state. Uh, I'm from I'm from Pennsylvania, and I worked with a team a number of years ago that had managers across Pennsylvania. And our state geographically is the vibe is being cut up all kinds of different ways from like a workforce development and a business and a business standpoint and it was really awesome to work with them in both a uh, face-to-face and also a virtual sense that they were working grassroots in their areas but they were collaborating with their counterparts across the state and then we came together because they would have uh, home office headquarter kinds of meetings together because they also wanted to do those aspects. And so it's really interesting. And I was on, um, I was on some of the forefront years ago, just, just like even my thing about thinking about education and saying that, you know, I, I'm not sure, really sure how that works. I never quite understood that everybody needed to be sitting at their desk doing whatever work from nine to five, depending upon what their, what, what the overall strategy was, what, what are roles and expectations, what does productivity look like and accountability. And so I'm excited to, um, see where this continues to go as far as culture and um, communication and teaming and remote and on site and all of those things. And I'm excited to bring value to organizations uh, overall. And 
Um, so I, I think it's going to be very interesting as we continue through this and meet organizations where they are to then help to take them to the next level in the way that they want to. I think that's good. I really think that the big deal is why and how are we really investing our time and energy and activities to achieve the results that we desire. And the way that we know results is is by developing our strategy overall. And so, you know, we need to really brainstorm and think about what's our why, what's our purpose, what's our vision, what do we want to become? How are we establishing and living by core values that drive our decision making every day? How how are we brainstorming the problems that we solve and the value that we bring that become our competitive edge? Why do business with us? And then that setting such the tone for our mission, the what and the how to really make things happen. That's where we really did, did really set the tone for how are we working smart to be efficient, effective, and productive and achieving results overall and then celebrating often. So I'm here through Illuminations Consulting to really optimize your success. And I appreciate the opportunity here, Allison. And I'm looking forward to chatting with who wants to do that. And let's consider how we're going to make things happen throughout 2023 and beyond.